a really big thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. So what, what a beautiful day we have got here. And I have to say this, for once, for once, man, if you watch me every week, you'll know the past few weeks, probably the past month, it's been pretty grim. I've enjoyed it, don't get me wrong, or else I wouldn't be going out in conditions like I've been going out in. But yeah, this makes a welcome change. It is, it's a little bit breezy, but it's quite warm. And look, we're not getting wet. We're not getting battered by horizontal rain, so it's a treat. Now, today I wanna to talk about a technique, really, that I feel um, we should all be doing more of. You don't see this very often. I suppose in a way, it's perhaps a little bit of a style. It's something that I almost never do, but I think it'd look really good. Or these types of photographs, I think, we'll get into it, of course, but I think they'd look really good in, say, like a portfolio, you know, across all of your photographs. These would be nice little additions, and um, I look forward to getting into it today, something a little bit different. It's been a bit of a theme of late, hasn't it? Just trying new things, I enjoy it, it's nice. Um, we're in the wonderful Yorkshire Dales, as I'm sure some of you can tell, so a little bit of a change of scenery as well, but um, yeah, probably quite challenging conditions to photograph in, but we love a challenge. Lovely lambs, chilling out. This, your little mate there, oh, he's stuck, man, he's stuck. And I don't have a clue what to do if I should like is he going to let me get him? You're not going to let me pick you up, are you, lad? Oh dear. So yeah, I always, I always feel a bit, a bit tight, like in these situations, a bit useless. I don't know what to do. I've no experience. Maybe I can see if I can herd him back in. Look at this tiny little enclosure. He must have got out somewhere. All right, let's have a look. I wonder if he got out his proper. Sp oh, I tell you what, I can just open the gate. What am I in about? <laughs> Absolute lunatic. Right, I'm going to open that. Oh no, because the other sheep could come out. Right, we're learning quickly here. I've got to get my mate over here. Oh man, that's that's not nice to see, is it? Giving his mum a little kiss through the fence. Right. Don't know if I'm going to include all this nonsense in the video. I'm going to herd him back down there. Quickly open the gate, see if I can get him in. The pressure's on. Come on, come on, that way. It's all for your own good, lad. Come on, that way. Hey, no man, I'm on your side and I'm on your side. Right, I've got him there, look. No, 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 no. Oh man. All right, this is the closest I've got. No, 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 no. Yeah, go through there, go through there, lad. Go, go on, go through there. No, how are you not going through that gap? I'm on your side, love. This is it now, I can't give up. He's an absolute wally, he just keeps jumping into the frigging fence. I can't give up on it now. Oh, he's found his own way. Look, there was another entrance. There was, a, there was another entrance and he's legged it. Right, it's a, it's a success. He's one of them two look, looking at me now. One of them two. And that was one of the mums, I don't know. We've done it. it inadvertently, to be fair, on the young lad, lass, they did it themselves. He found, he found an entrance through this little fold here anyway. The freaking landscape photography vlog, mate. Not a, a, a vlog on a, a British agriculture. Um, right, we'll make a bit of progress. I've got a cool location in mind. Hopefully a cool subject, actually, as well. And then we'll talk about this little technique that I want to try a little bit of today. So here we go, what a beautiful subject. Now, I'm gonna to have to get straight into this because this is a bit of a weird one. Um, this, where we are now, is called Ingleton Waterfalls Trail and it's actually on private land. And you can pay to come down it. You start at the other end from where I am at, in the town of Ingleton, and it's quite expensive, man. I think it's like a tenner or something. And I don't know why, I thought if I'd come in through the trail at the back end, I could just come to this waterfall, which is right at the back end, and not pay i just 
I don't know, I thought it might just be accessible from that end, but it isn't. It's hardly a surprise. Um, and there's basically signs up there saying like, no access from this end. I decided to ignore the, the signs and come down and I'm gonna pay the money. Uh, like I said, I think it's a tenner. Don't necessarily agree with it, but I also think it'd be proper arrogant just to rock up literally through the back door and say, I'm not paying. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it's nature, isn't it? Should we have to pay? I don't know. It's not an argument that I wanna get into. I just feel like, in fairness, I'll show you, they have, um, they've made it quite accessible. There's sort of landscaped areas you can see there. So obviously, at the very least, the money is going back into that, you know, making it accessible and a bit of an upkeep of the, of the trail and stuff at least. Um, so yeah, I'll make sure I pay. <laughs> I, I hope they don't mind me popping in through the back door and giving them the money in retrospect, but uh, yeah, what's done is done. Absolute thief, man. Um, but yeah, beautiful subject. Now, before we get into the technique that I want to talk about in today's video, I want to try and take, you know, just a normal, traditional photograph, let's say, um, as I would anyway, if I'd come here for the first time, of this beautiful waterfall. So I've been here for a while, to be honest, guys. Um, it's been tough purely just because of the sun, the direction of the sun is, it looks great in the background there. He's illuminating the waterfall, he's glowing, it looks fantastic, but it's been a nightmare for the foreground because, I don't know if you can see it, my shadow is just everywhere in the foreground. And of course, in this sort of location, look, I've barely got any room to manoeuvre. So um, it's worked out well because I'm scrapping the idea of a traditional photograph, let's say, of this waterfall, and I'm actually going straight into the technique that I wanted to talk about in this video. So it's forced me to do it, and, and the, the photograph looks really good on the back of the camera, at least. Now, what I wanted to talk about in today's video was the deliberate use of a shallow depth of field. This is something that I never do in my landscape images. 99% of the time, I want my photographs to be sharp from front to back, from left to right. I just want everything pin sharp. And I'd say for the most part, that'll always be the case. But this deliberate use of a shallow depth of field is something that I really think, um, you know, we shouldn't underestimate it as landscape photographers. In this instance, it's really helping me to isolate the waterfall as a subject. And it's giving it a, a bit of a dreamlike quality as well. I'm hoping you're gonna see that when you see the photograph, but. You know, above all, it's just creative, man. It's unique. It's something a little bit different. And like I said earlier, at the minute, I'm absolutely loving that. So I'm shooting at around about 70 mil with the long lens on the front. And I'm sort of, obviously, I've got quite a low perspective here. And I'm shooting across the water here, focused on the waterfall. My aperture is, is on f6.3. That's the lowest I can get it on this lens, zoomed in at 70 millimeters. And the foreground, is blurry, completely out of focus, but it looks class. And like I just said, I think the main thing that I'm liking here is the isolation of that waterfall as a subject. It looks really, really cool. And uh, definitely, definitely unique for me at least, you know. Um, now, as always with moving water, like I always say, the only thing I'm experimenting with really is shutter speed. I've taken a couple of shots at about half a second and then some up to like five seconds and loads in between. So I'll pick whichever one I prefer when I get home. Uh, but yeah, definitely a really great creative use of shallow depth of field. And like I said, that's exactly what I wanted to talk about in today's video. Man, I just submerged my foot. I just submerged my foot about halfway up my shin in that little pool of water there. That is a downer because oh, we've only really just started the adventure. We've got a wet left foot, but I'll tell you what that is. You know what that is, don't you? That's justice for trespassing and thinking I can pay my fee in retrospect. I might, I might, I might go to Sainsbury's tonight get myself a chicken burger, leave the shop, eat it, and then go back in afterwards and just say, oh, I robbed the chicken burger, like, I'm really sorry. Here's the two quid. It's probably about four quid nowadays, isn't it? Right, sun's sending me loopy. I'm not used to it. I'm going back the way. 
and um, on to another cool location. Hopefully we can try a little bit more of this um, shallow depth of field photography. Uh, I have to be honest, sometimes when I'm out and about, I'm, you know, taking a photograph, I just cannot figure out if it's going to be, you know, pretty cool, a bit creative, a good idea, or if it's going to be jaw-droppingly bad. This is one of them. The path that I've just walked on, um, I'm looking back down towards him now, and there's just this beautiful little kind of backwards S-curve in the two dry stone walls. They're really, really cool, extremely Yorkshire Dales. <laughs> and the light's pretty nice as, as well. You know, we're still a good couple of hours till sunset. And, uh, yeah, I don't know, yeah, it's looking nice. Now, I'll just pop it up on the screen for you to see there. This is the sort of thing that I'm going for. Little bit of blur in the foreground, as you can see there, as we're sort of looking across this, um, I don't know, this kind of hillside that we're on here. And that, I just want to centralise that S-curve. I'm zoomed in really far. Something along those lines there, yeah, but, like I said, I don't know. I don't know how that's going to turn out, but... In the light of creativity, we'll give it a go. Another shallow depth of field shot. <laughs> Right, I'm trying, uh, how's that looking? I'm trying a shot here, I'm not sure. You probably seen me a second ago faffing around with the tripod down on the deck. I was trying to capture another shallow depth of field photograph, but that time I was trying to blur out the background and have the foreground in focus, some of this wonderful limestone pavement, but it wasn't working. I'll pop that image up on the screen there. Um, I think it just became in the end, what I would call a bit of an abstract mess. <laughs> I was getting a bit too deep in the idea that I was going for. It felt a little bit alien to me. I like the fact that the tree was super blurred out in the background, but personally, I don't think it worked. At the very least, you know, it's the creative uniqueness thing that I've been trying to go for today with that shallow depth of field concept. Now, with that being said, the image that I'm taking here that I'm a little bit happier with, I'm still not sure, isn't a shallow depth of field shot. Basically what I'm, I'm really getting from this landscape is a strong sense of barrenness as an emotion, <laughs> if that makes sense, or desolation. You know, there's nobody here. It feels quite bleak in the best way possible. So I'm trying to get that emotion across with this photograph. We've got some really nice side light, as you can probably tell. I'm shooting quite wide, about 30 mil. And we've got this lovely lone tree off in the distance. I'm sticking him over on the right hand third and I'm shooting it critically for me here. I'm shooting it in a black and white. And I think that's helping, I hope, to get that emotion across even just a little bit. Um, I'm just not sure if the foreground is gonna be a bit too much of a texture overload with all the dappled light and the sort of limestone pavement, but I'm gonna give it a go. And at the very least, I'm hoping it gets that emotion across even just a smidge. So I've just, I've just put my gloves on and I thought I'd give you a bit of a fun fact. The German word for glove is hand shoe. I just think that's quality, man. It's like proper German as well, isn't it? It's great. Right, we're going to move on in a second. As the sun is dipping down, the light is getting lovely, actually. I wanted to say another big thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. If you've never heard of them, they're an all-in-one platform. They're actually a website that you can use to build your own website, which is what I did. My own site is through Squarespace. It was through them before I was sponsored by them, and I'm really, really proud of it. And um, they've got loads of professional looking templates that you can use, which have been designed by, well, professionals. And it makes things a piece of cake. Take it from me. You don't need any experience in web development or coding. It's so simple and easy, but 
your website will still look great. There's no compromise on how good it looks. It's gonna look professional. Absolutely fantastic these templates are. Um, they've also got e-commerce options as well, which means you can sell stuff through your Squarespace website. Perhaps you're growing an online business and you wanna start selling things. That's what I do. I sell prints, eBooks, workshops, calendars, all sorts. And like I always say, I wouldn't be able to run my business without my Squarespace website. And um, they've also got a really cool thing which I never really talk about. They've got this kind of section of your website where you can view all the different analytics. You can see what countries people are viewing your website from. You can see what pages people visit the most, what content people like the most. And if I'm being honest, I don't really use that part of it that much, but I just thought it was worth mentioning because I think a lot of people will find that really helpful. Uh, but yeah, definitely give them a go. If you'd like to, there's a free trial. Go to squarespace.com forward slash Henry Turner and that is a 14 day free trial. It's an old brainer, man. You've got nothing to lose, just give it a go. And if you like your free trial, make sure to use the offer code Henry Turner at checkout for 10% off your first purchase. Right, let's see if we can get some it during this beautiful looking golden hour now. So I don't know if this is gonna work, but uh, the sun is just starting to dip down below the opposite fell side and I'm trying to blur out the foreground oh, and have the background in focus. It looks terrible, if I'm being honest. I think I need to get even lower, believe it or not. All right, let's try that badger. Where's the sun, man? Oh, this is horrible because I'm like racing against the sunset. So, Oh, getting there. It's the grass. I need the grass like in the foreground. There's tripods flying about all over the shop. Photographers are mad, aren't they? Like, well, imagine someone walk past now, see me crawling on the ground like a caterpillar, shouting at my tripod. Absolute loonies. Right, here we go. F6.3, one one hundredth of a second, ISO 64. I'm zoomed in, yeah, 200 mil. I'm trying to capture. Some of the light as it sparkles in this grass. That looks horrendous, man. <sighs> right, I've got to be a bit more. Right, that's it. I was zoomed in too far. That was the problem. There's your dinner. Here we go. Just zoomed out to about 70 millimetres. I believe that was what the waterfall was, actually. There we go. That's a bit better. It's a bit more creative. It's not great. I've never really done this sort of thing that much. So <sighs> I don't mind that. I don't mind that at all. It's all right. Uh, right, so I'm still on the deck. I'm still looking like a bit of a madman. Um, the sun, you can probably see she's just dipping down. Just proper going down there. I've just tried it the other way around. Um, foreground grass is in focus as the light, very subtle light was sort of streaming in. You're gonna focus on my face. It was streaming into the grasses and then you could see the sunset off in the background, just sort of like out of focus a little bit. Yeah, gosh, man, the, the old, uh, what's it called? Temperatures gone down even more. It's a good job I got the old hand shoer on. Uh, on. <laughs> oh man. <sighs> Not even any sheep. It's, I can't even say like it's just me and the sheep here. It's proper quiet. How lovely. I can see Morecambe Bay right up in the distance there, look. It is so nice. I love that. Is it, what is it, the belt of Venus? That you get, that colour. See you later then. Sun's gone. There's a plane up there. Someone's off on the rolly bobs. So yeah, that was all right, you know. It was, uh, I love experimenting with stuff and I have been loving doing it a lot more recently. Thank you very much for tuning in. I'll show you the old grass shot now with the grass in focus. Um, I really appreciate your support. Comment below, is this something you have tried? I'd love to hear from you. Um, and yes, subscri subscribe if you're new to the channel. If you'd like to see me rolling around on the grass talking about sheep and hand shoer. See you on the next adventure. Out.